and Doubt just matched up for some berry madness on the ladders. I had to check in on this one. Dry Arabia will be the battlefield as we hop into a Delhi Abbasid matchup. Core, of course, being on the Abbasids has been hard training this Civ right now. Doubt going to the Delhi feels maybe a little bit outdated because the Delhi have kind of fallen off in popularity. Some of you may have noticed this, but a lot of players have been avoiding this. I remember we talked to Marine Lord. We live interviewed him, and he said that um, the prolonged feudal feels like it actually hurts the Delhi right now. They just don't have enough upside. And a lot of people have been struggling to find the way. Would love to see if a guy who has only recently come back to AO4 could find that way. Um, because I have to agree that the Delhi, the nerf to Dome of Faith, in conjunction with the fact that most other civs are now content to play long feudal, has hurt Delhi. One of Delhi's biggest advantages used to be the fact that every other civ almost in the game wanted to rush castle and they wanted to stay in feudal because by dragging feudal out longer, they could slowly naturally reach castle off of passive generation from sacred sites. Times are changing though. People are willing to pull up 50, 60 troops and they build to optimize that already. And that means that, you know, if you're up against a composition that has archers, spearmen and, and horsemen, you can't just sit on the front line with scholars healing, especially now that they take a lot longer to produce if you go the Dome of Faith route and you don't get as much of a discount as you used to. Still, we'll see which way Doubt goes. Maybe this is the perfect time for him to experiment with a certain um, Tower of Victories. We've seen one player do it pretty phenomenal in Dry Arabia. I actually think there's a lot of value in that structure now. Um, Dome of Faith is still decent, but I think a little bit overrated right now. The nerf to it uh, was that now it costs 90 gold to produce a Scholar out of it instead of 75. So it's still a discount of 60 gold, which is good. The issue, however, with Dome of Faith is that they changed most religious buildings to, by default, produce their religious unit at 30 seconds, and the Dome of Faith is still at 45. So in terms of escalating your Scholar count, Dome of Faith is detrimental. In terms of efficiently increasing your count, though, it's beneficial because you're getting the discount, right? I think the counter logic that we're going to see playing uh, with Delhi players from now on is that there's maybe more value in kind of escalating your scholar count and instead turning each of your individual infantry units into a more powerful unit with the Tower of Victory attack speed buff. That being said, I do think it comes down to your, like, your win condition because if you're going for the Tower of Victory build, to me, your win condition actually isn't in a prolonged feudal. It's in castle. Because I think the Tower of Victory lends itself towards a uh, House of Learning build. With the whole idea of going towards Mana Arms with the Hone Blades and a 20% attack speed buffer making you a god tier unit. But considering we're seeing the Dome of Faith, I think Dao is going to be playing that Prolonged Feudal. He's playing Prolonged Feudal against a Civ that's very comfortable with this these days though. We've seen the Abbasids are very efficient at reaching into multiple TCs while extending into military influence via Horseman Amassment. So that's why I want to kind of see Doubt playing towards Horse Spears here as an opener. Uh, and then setting up probably double Blacksmiths because I think we are going to be parked in Feudal for a while. And most importantly, he needs to get quality in his units alongside the healing to force a reinvestment out of Core. Because if Core gets an opportunity to kind of like sleep on it and rush Castle, I think this game tends to just transpire out of control in favor of the Abbasids. Any more doubt? You won't get a damn good amount of sheep and bring them back to base. He needs them as well as he's been exhausting the berries. In fact, both of them play on the berries. I love this. Like, neither player is going to outpost rush. Neither player is going to go for a dark age force. You get your berries for free, so you should be taking them. Because gathering rate is so much better. Remember that the base rate on berries is 0.66. The base rate on sheep is 0.75. But the Abbasids and the Delhi increase the gathering rate by 30%. On berries, which actually puts them on par with deer. It's pretty damn good. So you should always be going berries if you have the option to. Um, the only time I see people kind of forgo this is if they have some sort of build where they need House of Wisdom quicker. I just I don't think it's justified. Like to me, the optimal build will always be a mill has to be dropped. And the only reason you have for not building a mill to go into berries straight away is if you're up against uh, a feudal slash dark age aggressive sieve, something like the Mongols that might come and burn down a mill, in which case you've spent 50 wood, you've paid your opponent 50 uh, 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 resources from the raiding, and then you've lost out anyway. Tech ops now complete. As I said, we did get the Dome of Faith. It's going to be a very slow escalation for doubt, but at least it's going to be cheaper. And the goal with this, by the way, I think the reason he done this is because he's in a matchup against the Abbasids. 
he's probably going to need to match horseman on horseman. Which means you're going to need more food than if you went for a spearman archer comp. So you need to make savings elsewhere. So saving 60 gold every 45 seconds allows you to have less people in the gold vein and more in the food and wood. And that should allow him to inflate, uh, inflate his horseman count to keep up with the Abbasids. I just don't know if I fully agree with the thought process because the issue with trying to keep up the Abbasids and cavalry is that they can invalidate your cavalry race by simply adding in one or two camel archers. Never underrate the power of that aura. 20% damage negation is big. Sure, the horsemen get bonus damage against the camel archers. But let's say you're both amassing 20, 30, 40 horsemen. If I still just add in one camel archer, how are you reaching that camel archer? It's very difficult when you get massments of melee. And the difference then is a raw 20% increase in favor of the Abbasid player. Now, Delhi can somewhat offset it with a very long feudal just because their ability to move into all their techs for free. But that still takes a lot of time. And realistically, if we are talking long feudal, the Abbasid player will go for those techs as well. Sure, they'll be a bit pricey, but when we say prolonged feudal, we're talking 20, 25 minutes. And we're talking a Sieve that has multiple TCs, already has a second one up. So he won't care about the fact he's paying for those tier one blacksmith researchers, and you're not. Doubt. How are we looking? Sanctity almost ready. It's a minute, 10 seconds away. Has already got the piety as well. So we'll get the good bang for buck. And you can see he's already shuffling the skulls out very ahead of time. Dangerous to do this when you don't have enough troops to defend and you're spreading. In fact, right now, if we look at the count, like Dao only has a total of six horsemen. You could easily weave in and snipe if you're cool. If you got up to three or four horsemen, you chase these skulls around. You can just outmaneuver Doubt's horsemen before they can even arrive in position. In fact, most of them aren't even in position. They're just sitting outside the base right now. Double stables plus the archery range coming out. Well, highlight this, right? Like, you just shoot your hand. You went horseman. He is going to go spears now. The tough part about going spears here is, like, the camel archers will do bonus damage. It's so, like, now you're talking about a situation where if you hard commit with your cavalry on cavalry, your opponent has an aura to count you. If you try to weave around the fight instead, well, your opponent actually has a ranged unit and you don't. This is where Doubt will need to go into all three military buildings. I like that he hasn't gone double blacksmith because bla double blacksmith would feel too greedy now. I think what he needs is an archery range and he needs to set up some outposts around his sacred sites so he can protect his investment. That's how he gets ahead in this game. There we go. Sacred sites are being capped as Sancti is complete. I like the way that Doubt's pivoted. All horsemen to the front line. Front line must now be in the Abbasid base. If it's in Core's base, he's not pressuring sacred sites. You can see now he's going to peel off to run around. And wrap around comes in because Doubt needs to draw attention back here. Problem is there's limited opportunities because of the way Core's optimized his economy. He's only playing on wood and food right now because he doesn't need gold. Core knows this is going to be a very prolonged feudal. So he doesn't want to spread his eco fin and get picked. That's why now you'll see one or two horsemen still continue out. Push the scholars off. Sacred sites were capped but will now be decapped. Spearmen are however reacting. Doubt. He should be splitting these up. Second wave going to the east side, so the horseman will be able to pinch this one. It looks like he'll be able to protect the sacred site investment. Meanwhile, Doubt, because he still has the horseman on the back side, Core is now mirroring movements. But finally, the camel archers are arriving. This is where things can really start to snowball in favor of the Abbasids. <laughs> A little bit of misclick as Core gets the villagers involved as well. You can see Doubt has no choice but to retreat. Now, upside for Doubt is if he plays these fights right and keeps picking and then running, picking and then running, he will over time be able to heal up. But that's pretty far down the line. My concern is what's going to happen between 12 to 14 minutes as opposed to what's going to happen 18 to 20. Because 18 to 20, if Dao is optimal with the way he peels horsemen, he'll have a bigger army that's all healed. However, the camel archers at the earlier point can force bad engagements for Dao. Especially if Core continues to invest, which he is. Double archery range and a hard investment of camel archers. Yes, it's pricey on the food, but what's happened here is you have to remember that Core, because you went two TCs, you then have two choices. You either rush castle or you leverage that extra eco into more military. He's chosen the latter because he's up against the, the Delhi, and it means he's actually able to afford a unit that's otherwise too pricey. Remember, camel archers cost 240 resources each. They are somewhat of a glass cannon.
Horseman, do march out, doubt. Kind of sleeping on this right now. He split off to go left side, so that's going to be a bad fight to start off with. Remember these camel arches. You can do some work. Cool, cool. Uh, sleepy go bye die, bye bye, and die die. That was a bit of a mistake there. Camel arches now arrived though, up to four. He could counter out the spears if he micros this right. He's using stealth for us, but he's not able to. Mistakes made. Doubt. What is this click? Get me out. Get him out. Bad fight there. Kills off five spearmen, only loses half HP on one Camel Archer. Good trade there for Core. Needed after losing the Horseman. They're still having the lead here. 10 Horsemen to Doubt's 10. The reliance on spearmen could hurt him. Love this out of Doubt. We never actually get to see it. Okay, we don't frequently see it, right? Mainly because we don't see the Delhi at the moment, but Old Delhi would not do this. They never dream of this. Secondary TC, I think is actually a really good play here. You're going to eventually win the military slog if you kind of play equal fights, right? Because of the healing. You're going to lose the economy battle, though. You need to balance the power of the Abbasids. And this is how he's going to do it. Trip Sacred Sight, which is giving 450 gold trickle, plus the fact that he's now cut off the escalation in Eco. And in fact, if you look at the numbers, remember that 10 villagers gather about 400 resources a minute, and he's getting 450 from the Sacred Sites. So they're close to neck and neck here on the eco. However, they are not neck and neck in the tech. You can already see what's happened from Core. He's heading up now. We talked about this. You either go free TCs or you're looking for a castle time. And he's built a big enough military force to threaten. But he's realized that this is going to prolong feudal. And that always benefits the Delhi. You can see the numbers already. Delhi have saved up 1,200 gold. He doesn't want to play into Doubt's hand. So instead, he will look to escalate into his advantage, which is going to be Castle Age. A nice snipe in the meantime. Horseman moving around the backside. Oh, I'm noticing a critical error here, out of doubt. You are 12 and a half minutes in the game and no textiles. That, sir, is a cardinal sin for the Delhi, especially when it would only take you 22 seconds and no cost of resource to get. Speaking of cost of resources. The investment's been made. House of Learning being constructed up now as Doubt invests 15 villages into the construction. Problem is that this doesn't benefit him, the timing. Look at it. His tech up timing is going to be complete around the same time as Core. That shouldn't be happening. The Abbasid shouldn't have that advantage because what happens now is that Core, he's escalating his eco while you now are idling 15 villages to get that build done. And all the while, you're not setting the pace either because notice what Core's done. He kept the horseman on the backside. Dao does have the bigger military force, but he's not leveraging that to apply pressure. Instead, he's defending his side of the map, and it means that Core gets to have his unlock without any price being paid. You might eventually get these horsemen, but it's unlikely, because now all he has to do is weave left and run out the other side. And he has access because Dao never walled this in. So Tech Up comes out on both sides. Dao's like, what the hell? Wasn't maybe expecting it to be such an optimal timing in conjunction with his own. And while Core is doing that, he's also setting up the farms now to give himself escalation into the late game. Because Core's new goal is to reach Imperial. He wants to escalate to run a pop cap and go Imperial. Because the Delhi can't do it. Yes, the research times in Imperial got improved a little bit, but it's still a Sif that doesn't want to be there. It's a long time to be researching after investing 3,600 resources. Meanwhile, that eco lead remains very strong here for Core. After that pinch on the backside, you can now see he's over 20 villages ahead. This offsets the advantage of the sacred sites that Doubt's been generating. And the win condition's been removed because of the movement out with the horseman and the eastern one. And now, amassment in the center. Doubt, a little bit split. Can't take a good fight. Mistakes made there. Skull's being pinched for nothing. Spearman AFK on a vacation right now. And it looks like all sacred sites to be decapped. Doubt may find himself in trouble here. He needs to get a one-up. Now, this is either free TC or take Sacred Sites back, but either way, you need to take a good fight. Because if you go free TCs without fighting, mm -mm -mm, you're going to get dove. If you go into the Sacred Sites, you're going to have to fight for them because Core is confident about his ability to take fights, as he should be. You see the upgrades coming out. Horsemen, Camel Archers, and Spearmen. It really is all he needs. And even the Camel Handling now being researched, this is going to be the big deal breaker. Those Camel Archers are going to move too fast. The horseman will not be able to punish, and the spearman will not be able to stand their ground. Doubt needs to switch up into man at arms now. Instead, he goes for lances. Lances? Why? Oh, God. He's playing against camel archers. 
None of these units hit pretty hard against you. They make sure you don't hit hard. And you're up against Spearman already. This is a problem. Dao, not only losing Eco, but likely to lose in the transitions as well. Mana Arms would have been in saving grace, but they're not going to be there. I sort of understand it, though. Like, Dao doesn't want Mana Arms because he's playing against Cavalry Comp. So he wouldn't be able to maneuver. But that's where marching drills can really be clutch. And that's why I'm surprised we haven't got a second Blacksmiths with that being researched yet. Dao, in the meantime, going around the backside. Horsemen trying to weave their way in, but... Likely to find no real value here. As Cork can just mirror the move of this new troops coming out. Still has mid-map control and doubt. I am really not sure about this Lancer play. I get why he wants it. Like, he went house learning. He wants home blades value. But that's why I was kind of room for the Man at Arms. I mean, Man at Arms with Force March is still, in my eyes, one of the most overlooked elements of Delhi gameplay and it's kind of frustrating to watch like it's so powerful and yet so often slept on you know it's not slept on though probably because it'd be quite rough to sleep on elephants first tower elephant comes out from doubt now these units were heavily crippled they've got a lot more range armor but they lost a heavy amount of their health now and you are up against horsemen Oh my god, speed those horsemen. The amount of villagers going down once again, getting caught in the berries. Dao will never learn his lesson. Now 31 villagers behind. And only a single sacred site to his name, soon to be a second. But look what's coming out of core. It's the third TC. Interesting choice here. The reason he does this is core now wants to reach disposable village account. He wants to throw them away on mid map resources because he can see that this might go the mile. I quite like the play. In the meantime, I don't like this play. Court, court. We've got to talk about this. Uh, this little aggro, sir. Just micro better, man. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that coaching room puppy ball is brilliant. Just be better, man. Court definitely looking like he's in better form right now. Down. About to get those home blades, but if you look at the comp, it's just barely any lances. Starting to feel like maybe compound defenders would have been better. Just get the village fortresses going. But in fairness, he already had the second TC, so maybe kind of a moot point for him. You have to remember that the change to compound uh, to the keeps and what's required to repair them heavily nerfed compound defenders. Sure, you you know you've got two hundred stone saving per keep, but you have to repair them all now with stone. I really can't emphasize how big of a deal that is, and how big of a deal breaker. It is. I think we're not going to see many compound defender builds anymore unless it's about a quick cast laser rush where you drop keeps in your opponent's base. For the purposes of village fortresses, I feel like that build has been heavily nerfed. Other things that have been heavily nerfed, these elephants. It's what Dan wants to rely upon, but cool. We talked about the possibility of reaching up. You heard the noise. He did have the option. Way laid it though. He wants to pop cap first. Once he's pop capped, Imperial is pretty much free. I mean, you're paying 3,600 resources, but you guys get what I mean. You're free to do it. He's not really sacrificing anything else, alternatively. And my concern about these elephants is just, look what you're up against. Like, it's horseman spearmen, it's melee units that will get on top of you. And. I actually rate the Abbasids as a very good sieve at dealing with Delhi elephants. They take a while to gap close, but you have to remember that the Phalanx. The Phalanx is so powerful for the Abbasids. It means they don't have to surround you with spears the same way as other sieves do. If they just poke and chase, double the units are poking you as they chase. And now this unit has less health. It's going to be ugly to watch. And it looks like Doubt's going to force the reaction now as he's trying to breach through the walls. A few Lancers are still roaming around on the east side, but no villagers in this area anymore. There's not really anything in the area for Core to worry about. Might extend it into a farm area later, though. For the time being, notice the Core isn't rushing to address this. He isn't really phased by what he's up against. Doubt hasn't presented a hand that can end the game. Now the wall's going up, so Core's going to make sure no flank attacks. And Dao is limited in his ability to flank attack now because his reliance on elephants. One of the big issues we see for Delhi players when they quickly just diverge into these uh, 
elephants is that they lose the mobility that made them lethal in the earlier point in the game. You might still see a few lancers, a few horsemen being pushed, but ultimately you've now converge your composition into a static army. And it means that m that flanking maneuvers aren't really good or feasible anymore. And I'm sure Kor has identified this. Like, he probably saw the elephants. He saw a lack of escalation in the lancers and the horsemen count. And he's probably looking right now and going, okay, so I just need to win one staged battle and I win. And the cool thing for Kor is that this is dragging on so long that at this rate he's going to unlock Golden Age 3. And when he does, he can win these stage battles with cheap units because the production rate is going to allow him to keep replacing the lost army a lot quicker than the Delhi can replace elephants. Speaking of those elephants, it's go go time. Cool. Did stop building Maganels. Is forced to react on the south side. Looks like there was a sneak in there. He really needs to get these walls kind of fully enclosed. And now Siege on the front line, TC, because he got drawn to the backside. Brilliant play there by Dao. A few horsemen pull the entire army south, and it now means the elephants are free to rain hell upon the front line. Maganel shot looking pristine, though. A heavy hit there. Second wave coming in. Needs to back them up, though. Spearmen are here to react. Maganels are a problem that Dao hasn't really answered. The Maganels are about to make that front line go smooth. They target out the elephants instead. Dive through from the Spearmen to get on top of the Mangos. Now a wraparound. Spears getting in on top of this. Elephant standing their ground as the heels come up. And the Skull is a defensive keep on the left side from Core. And Ellie Boy is now up to seven, but the Horseman's still not here, marching north side. But that delay, that delay gives a good fight over. Doubt is going to sacrifice a few Elephants on the exit. He gets the TC, though. He kills off a few villagers. Kills off a sizable chunk of the army of Core. But the second wave is going to be too big for him to deal with. Core now marching forward. Doubt in full retreat. I love this from Core. He cancelled the keep. He realized actually he didn't need it. He could just push him back. And now look at the effect of this pushback. Moves in. Spearman stabbing down. Two more elephants to fall. This is the power of the Abbasids. They are an effective tool against these elephants, especially since the nerfs. More ranged armor, but a lack of HP is the problem. And now the horsemen disengage them. Core, click past him. Get on top of him right now. Pinch them in and kill them down. And you can see the effect. Spearmen and horsemen alike getting bonus damage against the elephants. Maybe a missed opportunity here. Core could have definitely gap closed on the other side and blocked the retreat. But instead, he wanted to keep a condensed formation to snipe off a bunch. And after all that, after all said and done, Core definitely got the better side of this trade. Yes, a lot of troops dying, but the elephant cost. These are 1,000 resource units compared to a lot of spearmen and horsemen dying. Pretty damn cheap. And off the back of that, Core then also gets this. The keep on the central sacred site, allowing the decap and removing the win condition from Dao. Dao now needs to go back to the drawing board. Cool. I hope he kind of optimizes because I think the, the problem with that last fight, like he could have probably killed all the elephants if he'd moved the horsemen forward. I think he was paranoid about a wave of spears coming. They weren't there yet, though. I think the bigger issue is the overreaction. Like, he saw horsemen on the backside, and he wanted them gone. He sent all of the camel archers and all the horsemen. Realistically, you could have spent maybe half your horsemen and camel archers down there, and it would have been good enough. And then you would have had horsemen to gap close and block the elephant's retreat. At which point, I think Doubt loses the entire army, and Kor is able to strong arm into his base. But because of the way this played out, Kor gets the reset... But so does Doubt. Doubt now setting up defensive keeps, going for the village fortresses. So he'll be able to get disposable villager forces to send into the midfield as well. It's going to be important for him because you can see that Core wanted to play towards that. Although he did lose his third TC, he still has two and he is up at 120 eco. So not exactly weak in the villager department. But he might be weak in the tech up because Doubt is going to beat him to the punchline. Look at this. The Delhi don't do it often. But Doubt sees that this game is going to go the mile. It is going to be a marathon instead of a sprint. And he wants to get one step ahead of this. Palace of Assault and Bilm built up. But Doubt, not exactly with a strong military force. The upside for him is Core is playing very reluctant and defensive. And the reason why Core is playing this defensive is likely because he's playing up against the Delhi. So Core, in his mind, he doesn't actually see a threat in letting this delay into Imperial. He's about to discover that threat, though. Because Core, although he has begun his tech up, his is now locked and Doubt has a minute and 30 seconds advantage on him. He'll need that minute and 30 because of the time it now takes him to unlock his tech upgrades. You can see them now being queued up. Siege Elephants take three and a half minutes. 
You won't say mana arms upgrade. That's six and a half minutes. He needs this time. He needs this window. Core might not give it over to him for free, though, because Core, although he's slowing his tech up, he did pop cap. He is pushing in. Keep being targeted already. Trebuchet and Maganel. And no boiling oil yet. March in with the horsemen on top of the elephants, pushing them back further away. And now Camelarch is moving in. Heavy damage to Pepper into these elephants. Sure, they've got heavy amounts of armor from range, but Camel's hitting for 15 each. Definitely stings. Right now, frontline holding for the moment. Doubt just needs to buy time, and he knows it. Elephant's now being targeted by the Maganel. Keep being ignored. Trebuchet just not doing enough damage here. Camelarch is now diving in to just try and strike onto the eco lines. Will force idle time in the base of Doubt, but Doubt stabilizing, and it feels like Korn may have thrown away an army that he shouldn't have here. And after a retreat away, heavy damage rendered upon him. Plenty of camels going down. There's a 240 resource units that have been spent. Doubt. Very confident now because the first two minutes of this Imperial Age could be very dangerous for him. Yet he set himself up well with the keep and with the elephant line. It means he's able to hold. And now if you look at the research times, Siege Elephant soon to be done. Two minutes away. Elite Spearman upgrades are five minutes out. But that five minute window is closing. He should be fine for this. And because Cord wasn't able to wrap around, he had to strong arm his way through the frontal defenses. It means that Dao is going to stabilize long enough to actually realize Imperial Aid Delhi. And that's not something we say often. In more court. Tech up has completed. Medical centers to be researched. Wants to get the camel benefits as well. But this delay, this delay is benefiting Dao. And make no mistake about it, folks. Like, Dao needed to be first in Imperial here. If he was last, this game looks very different. But I love the way he leveraged his position. The way he manipulated Core in those last three fights gave him this lead. And now Core, sure he's escalating the trebuchet count, but this delay has bought enough time that Dao has offset the danger here. He has 1,500 stone to repair this keep. It's not dying anytime soon. And now with the Imperial Age power being realized by Dao first and the first imp units coming out for him ahead of time, it's more like that the Core is going to be the one forfeiting a keep. That's why you can see the Culverin coming out. Core doesn't want to give it over easily, and it seems Doubt is hesitant to send the Bombard in blindly. Wants to get the vision up. Map still feels quite wide open in the midfield because both of them have been condensed into the center. The Core, to his benefit, did manipulate that flank. Doubt had to mirror that movement on the east side for less gold, though. It looks like Core will have a lot more gold going later on in this game. It's a little bit concerning for Dao. We never really checked on the Relic situation. Whew. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 that's good, Dao. I think we're good there. So he might not have as many gold veins, but he might actually not care. As he's got the passive gold in his favor. And that's why you still see reserve golds that he hasn't tapped yet. This is going to be a problem because remember, Dao, he is up in Imperial Age. He is the Delhi. He is researching Tide Barnes. And he doesn't even have to pay 500 gold to get it. Sure, it's going to take him five minutes, but definitely worth it once he gets there. And this is the other thing I'm a little bit worried about for Core. Zeal has been queued up. Will take a while, but once it's there, that attack speed buff. Oh, lordy. These tower elephants are going to make quick work of your front line. See, the down. it's just a cheap comp. Spearman and Elephants is really all he needs right now. Core's the one who needs to make a transition. He isn't really building Camel Archers anymore. He's switching over to Hand Cannoneers, and I don't like that play here. Tower Elephants can handle them pretty well. Speaking of which, Tower Elephants now up to 12. If anything, Core needs more Maganels. This is a problem right now. Core definitely looks like he's got more on the map to a certain degree, but he doesn't feel like he's getting more out of the map right now. Doubt's play into those early relic grabs really made the difference here. And it means he has better escalation in the late game. I don't say that often in the deli, but it's so damn true right now. Unless Core can somehow start trading. But he isn't going to be able to rush towards that. He needs to address the elephants first because there's a hell of a lot of them. The Culverins are here to help with that. Culverins that do do pretty damn well. The raw HP decrease has hurt elephants' ability to handle siege. We've seen the effect of it now. Now moving in again once more on a doubt's keep. 
Elephant starting to be healed up again. Not many scholars here, though, mind you. In fact, only six scholars total coming out for Dao. Interesting to see. Usually we see Delhi players leverage a lot more healing than this. Especially when they go for Elephants, but instead he wants the Spears. Spears able to gap close here. Straight away, Trebuchet is going to be picked. And Boiling All hasn't been researched, but it looks like Dao doesn't want to risk it to find out. He's going to back away. And that back out, remember, these crossbows do a hell of a lot of damage. 34 damage coming out from him, which is why they're able to quickly pick apart the front line. Spearmen are going to be sacrificed, but it's a sacrifice Dao is willing to make. Oh, Aggro comes out. Elephants, what the hell are they doing right now? Oh, this is a mistake. Dao, Dao, no. Not the fight you want. He realizes it and pulls them back. But several elephants are going to be picked because of it. Mistakes made there. Some people saying Dao might be Lord of Macro, but not looking like Lord of Micro there. Gets caught looking elsewhere. Core throwing away a lot of spearmen, but getting value out of them. In the meantime, now escalating the hand cannon near count into the double digits. Dao not able to match that hand cannon near premium count right now. He needs to replace the elephants and get into the siege. If Dao can get up to four or five bombards, he can start to blitz through this base. The culverins are still a problem that he hasn't answered though, which is why you're not going to see him amass bombards at such a ridiculous count. He needs something better. He needs to probably go into springles. He should have the shot trigger research sorted, so this would be the time to go for it. The problem is that Culverins are pretty damn tanky. They can just insta-snipe out your Springholds, but it doesn't go the other way. You need three or four Springholds to deal with the Culverins. All these Springholds placements in outposts are proving annoying for Core to try and find his way to the backside. You can see he throws away a few horsemen, but it's not going to draw enough tension from Doubt. I think Core wants to trade. I wouldn't be surprised if he preps for it soon. He has the resource count to get trade win. And I would expect marketplaces in the next five minutes, because this game looks like it's going to go for quite a while. Core is at military pop cap right now. And he's getting all the premium researchers. After that, it's the most logical step next. Especially considering that the weakness of what Doubt has done here is he's fielded that static army we talked about. It means he can't play flank. The problem with not playing flank here is he probably won't even know the trade is going on until it's too late. It really is dangerous the way Doubt's playing this game. It's strong if you hit your timings. And I think that's why he's going now. Because the Bombard is the timing to go. Only one Maganel. Colvin's trying to wheel in range of the Bombard. He wants to try and keep that keep alive. But I think it's too late for it. Set on fire, no repair crew coming out. Bombard peeled away, love that play by Doubt. And now look at this, the micro away, the amount of the spearmen going down. They can't even gap close anymore. Tower Elephants will be healed up. Damn good fight coming out from Doubt. He didn't quite finish off the keep. So Core will be able to repair it, but with very limited stone, this is a frustrating position to find yourself in if you're the German. Right, it's not the German, it's the Abbasid. Bassa German does sound like a very interesting heritage, though. Sounds like uh, one, one of those kind of was a Knights Templar, then joined the other side type stories. Hollywood might want to pick that one up. Looking like a Hollywood level fight here. Michael Bay action. The amount of explosions going off here. Fire on both sides. Keep stays alive. Healing coming out for Core as he stands his ground. Brilliant play here. And the Culverin now sniping on the outpost on the side. The commitment of elephants to the detriment of doubt. This is the bad fight. This is the one he didn't want to take. So many elephants being sacrificed and nothing being gained. Woo! You guys wonder why elephants seem a little bit extinct these days. This is why. Ah, oh, extinct? No. Endangered, yes. Of course, going to make himself a very fancy ivory hat out of these elephants. It's going to resemble the one made, uh, worn by the old man in community. You go, you know the one I'm talking about, guys. Make himself a wig out of ivory. Elephant count still somehow double digits after that from Doubt. And Court did throw away the spearman, but he kept the hand cannoneers alive. This is looking a lot better right now for Court. However, if he wants to keep this escalation going, I need to see that trade. It has to happen soon. And yep, he's aware of it. Court's like, uh-huh. Das ist gut idea. He's going to set up the markets on the backside. Donkey time, boys. And remember that the Abbasids can do this pretty easily. The Abbasids only uh, pay 66% of what other Sivs do. 
50 wood, 50 gold per donkey. And Trade Wing could easily come out after this as well. At which stage, late game is going to be under his control. The Delhi don't trade well. They trade well in fights. But the commercial trade is the problem. Now down. Stands his ground once again, but notice the hand cannoneers are never being sacrificed. That's the key detail here. Corn now up to 25 hand cannoneers. If you guys remember, my number one rule in Age of Empires, gun is the natural predator of the elephant. As we all learn eventually in Imperial Age, gun beat everything, except horsemen, which is why Doubt's now gone into them. This is saving grace if you can get in. In fact, look where he's going. Wrapping around. He's trying to scout on this area. The keep should scout out what he's doing, though. He needs to mirror the movement. The problem is there's double pinched out. He's bringing in the elephants so the horseman can get through, and he's going to block out the trade before it gets online. And now you need to react. Core needs to peel troops off to deal with this. Trade hasn't been spotted yet by the looks of it. In fact, where is the trade going on from Core? He waypointed it, but he's pop capped. That's good news for actually Core. Lux out through his own lack of room here, his own efficiency. If the donkeys were already pushing, Doubt would now know, and he'd keep investing here. But Doubt, oh my god, no call! What is this heresy? What is that? Those horsemen have been on slim fast. Good lord. Now, luckily for Core, the spearmen were in position. They'll block it out. The horsemen won't be able to do much. But that is absolutely disgusting. Relic, we've got to do something about these walls. That is absurd. How does that make even more sense? Like, how does that make any more sense? Yeah, this wall naturally builds into the tree light. What? Get me out. Get, get, get me out. And doubt. No. No way. He doesn't see it. He doesn't see the trade. The donkeys haven't come out yet, but if he moved a little bit further back, he would have at least in the marketplace. His doubt after this investment in the pushdown here is unlikely to come back here again. And even if he did, Core has made it one choke point now. And a difficult one for him to enter. Oh my Gideon. Doubt will feel robbed when he looks back at this game. Because now trade can begin and it will be unnoticed. Core does need to recalibrate his pop cap first, though. Maybe kill a few villagers off. I mean, maybe a few villagers have a few accidents. Maybe they slip down a flight of stairs. Just saying. Maybe they slip and fall down a flight of stairs onto a delete key. Might be a good idea around now, Core. Just saying. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you should deliberately do that. I'm saying it should just naturally happen. Am I being subtle enough? He still has no trade. It's just sitting there waiting. The donkeys are just waiting to start the race. Like, come on, man. I'm faster than a horse with a jockey. Let me go. Honestly, these caravans, like these traders are going to take so long to appear that when they finally do appear, it's going to be like watching an episode of Shrek when he announces himself. Donkey! how excited I'm going to be to see them. I mean, they're just not there. Meanwhile, doubt we'll get another opportunity to strike in. Manganels are ready to party. Trade numbers are still at... Drum roll, please. Zero! God, this is hurting. <laughs> you, do, do, do you want me to make it worse? Core is about to complete the last of all the unique trade researchers for the Abbasids. He already paid 3,600 resources for trade, and he still doesn't have a single trader. <sighs> this is why Corpium was created. Cool. Could this finally be the time where he no longer Pop caps himself out of trade. Maybe. Hand cannon is pushing out. Maganel shots big from Doubt. Cool. Makes a mistake. Ten hand cannon is down. Doubt not moving the Maganels forward yet. Instead, the Culver's are now going to start sniping out. Hand cannon is have to back away. 
Elephant count not looking that healthy for Doubt though. Spearman blocking out the horseman from marching through. They hold him at the choke point. Good maneuver by Core. Colvin's looking to be sniped, but not enough horsemen here to do so. And now, now the pushback. Horsemen wrapping around under the elephants, pushing the back. Donkeys still not being bloody built. Come on! I'm losing my mind right now, Core. I'm losing it. Pushing from the horseman, wrapping around on the siege. Dow able to hold for the moment. The spearmen are now gap closing. Elephants are not going to hold against this. The damage is just too high here. Now it starts to peel back. Siege all fallen. The culverins are the MVPs here, and they have to be because Core has practically no gold income because trade has still not been initiated in the Abbasid Empire. New wave of horsemen come behind this. Culverins are going to be sniped. Good maneuver. Dow gets rid of the anti siege. Core. Still not a single trader. Wait, they're done, they're done on the line. Five donkeys are on the way, we've done it. And all Core had to do is throw away his entire army. Why was that so hard? Core, please delete some villages. I can already see it coming. Core arrives in my chat. Actually, KP, uh, I intended to wait that long to get the donkeys because I wanted to make sure I had all the unique researches from the House of Wisdom before I pushed them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Explain to me why each marketplace had three donkeys queued up then. Oh, I just want, didn't want to have to click it later. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's finally there. The beast is unleashed. Trade is underway. And this, this is where the economy will scale beyond what Doubt is capable of. Doubt needs to get through this, but yet this keep still stands and still blocks Doubt's route to success. Doubt still with gold reserves for the time being, but it's going to dry up fast. Remember what he's done here. Yeah, he's got five relics, but he keeps pushing elephants. Tower elephants that cost 600 gold each in conjunction with Siege. It is problematic. And I think that there's some discussion around elephants, like should the elephants have had the costs decrease because of the changes? Not necessarily. The whole idea with the change was to make sure elephants were countered by melee, which they weren't often before. I actually was fine with the change. I think the issue here is like Dao maybe over leveraged himself into elephants with not enough healing. He missed a window earlier on where if he had more scholars, I think he could have pushed deeper with elephants. And I think that's what's set him back now. And Core has just reacted perfectly. Like, the issue isn't as much with Elephant's performance as it is with these two units' performance. This is why Abbas is, like, low-key becoming one of the strongest civs in the game. Spearman and Horseman meta keeps getting buffed. It keeps getting stronger and stronger. And if there's one civ that benefits more than any other civ in the game from that buff, from that meta, it is the Abbasids. Between their production rate on these cheap units late game, the fact that they have Phalanx to buff the amount of units attacking from their Spearman comp, and then boot camp as well, the spearmen are the most godly in the game. And the horsemen really aren't that far off because of how strong the eco is in the late game to be able to afford horsemen nonstop. Now, I'm not saying they're outright the best horsemen, Civ, right? You've still got things like Boy's Fortitude with the Roos that can compete. But the spearmen, specifically, is really, really powerful for them. Especially in conjunction with their ability to build Siege. I think people have slept on a basset for a long time, but they've been waking up more and more. And it really is the rise of the Abbasid Empire here. Marching the backside, horsemen doing what Core loves to do best, harassing the backside eco and forcing Doubt's attention as his eco numbers begin to shrink. Economy continues to scale for Core. Although it would if he wasn't pop capped once again the donkeys. Only 10 active traders right now. But. Those traders are bringing in a hell of a lot of cheddar right now. 221 gold. Don't forget the 55 stone per. This means that Core can begin keep drops. Not only can he now start repairing his frontline keeps, he can start to build forward into the base of Doubt. And Doubt, man, I honestly, I think Doubt's just on a mission here. He's heard the plight. He's heard that there's not enough elephants being bred each year. He's just trying to do his part. Problem is, Part of his part is also sending them into a war zone, so I don't feel like he's actually helping the elephant population here. In his eyes, probably a little bit of population control. Yeah, 
In before people like Elephant's not strong enough, needs buff. When Elephants are idle for 45 seconds on the spot, they start mating, creating little baby Elephant Tower Elephants. I'm going to stop now. But they're balanced because they have half the health and only have one crossbowman on top. Okay, I'm really going to stop now. Doubt maybe should stop pushing so many elephants. Wave coming in. Just once again, the horsemen and spears. And the eco never really letting up for court. Throwing away a lot of this. Bombard starting to siege into the tower line. Front line holding good for Dow. Bombard's moving in for that keep. Straight away striking onto a second wave of horsemen. Quickly surging out. Remember, this is the power of the Abbasids. The fact that they're able to push out all their troops 20% faster so they can renew a secondary line. And that line of spearmen from Dow is spinning quickly here. Scholars are keeping them alive for the meantime, but they need to get through the Bombards before the Bombards get through the keep. He's on top of it now. Maybe the mistake made here is that the Bombards were not targeting out the elephants at all or the Scholars. Needs to switch it up somewhat. Maganel's now arriving. That should push Doubt back a little bit, but not before he gets rid of the siege that's trying to end him. Trebuchet count now up to three for Doubt as he looks to get through the keep on Core's side. And Core learning a hard lesson on what happens when you play away from medical centers. New Spearman line finally there. And I think actually the education lesson here is maybe Stable's not on the front line. Maybe Rack's on the front line because Core isn't pushing New Spears out quick enough here. However, neither is Doubt. Dow's number is now in single digits. The lack of spears here means that the horsemen can now surge forward and they can overwhelm. Straight onto the trebuchets, onto the backside. Ignores the elephants and moves beyond them. Maganel's in the meantime, targeting out the elephants. Keep gonna go down. However, siege that Dow has built up is also now falling with the wraparound of horsemen. Remember, they get bonus damage not just against the elephants, but also against the siege, and all the siege is going down. The Maganel is shifting the front side. Not sure what the hell they're doing here, and the elephants, they can't protect this. Maganel's going down, and now the pick begins. Scholars are gone. Elephants to your front line. Countered by both the Spearman and the Horseman. And although you do have mass, I don't think you have longevity here. Just look at the income numbers. Doubt a little bit more efficient in the food usage, but the issue is the income. A thousand extra for core per minute. And the push just continues. Doubt losing Scholars. Losing Spearman, being forced to double down. This would be the pivot moment, but instead, Doubt now sees an opportunity. He weaves his way in with the Horseman, and Kaur, still with the one-two punch, needs a switch up because Spears and Horseman alone are not really doing it here. Not with a new wave of Spearmen that are coming out from Doubt. That's why I really want to see Hand Cannoneers join the fray, and that's why we're going to get them now. Remember, Core, he has 3,000 gold a minute coming in. He needs Siege, he needs Hand Cannoneers. This is a time to spring the premium units on Doubt. Doubt will not have an answer to it. However, you also need to fill your gaps right now because you're looking like a sinking ship here with the horsemen flooding through into the eco. That's going to be a problem all the way to the backside. They found the donkeys. Down, not reacting quick enough to this. We'll send a small group back now to try and count the move. In the meantime, the elephants get a little bit too frisky, diving in deep now. Escalation continues. Now Man at Arms, as well as the Spearman and the Horseman, realizing he needs a strong front line and then hand cannon is. It's all about premium units. This is a switch up the core's now looking for. He's been hard on Spears and Horsemen, but now they don't serve the same purpose. They aren't needed anymore. If he can get up to 20 hand cannon is, he can wipe Doubt's army and Doubt will not have the resource surge to replace them. For the time being, Doubt is looking strong. The core looking a little bit frail here. This is what I was warning against, right? When you're playing the Abbasids, you have a 20% increased production rate. But that means you also have a 20% increase in food demand with this comp. And that is why these numbers now look pathetic. Remember, once upon a time, Core had 10,000 surplus food. No longer. And the mistake made here is that he didn't prep hand cannoneers. He needed premium units, but instead, he forgot it. He kept pushing cheap crap, and now Doubt at almost 20 tower elephants and a cheap crap lineup of Spearman himself is pushing in. And Core, he's got a little bit of time, but he needs to use it well. He's surging once again in the Spearman and Horseman, and I just don't like this anymore. I need to see the hand cannoneers. The Maganels could be the game-winning play. If he can get up to five, he can wipe out the tower elephants. But you need to get up to that five and you are lacking wood because you're investing so much wood into Spearman and Horsemen. Oh, that stings. Maganel count just isn't there right now. It's only one. The diving from Doubt is looking good. The elephants behind it now sieging through all the infrastructure. A Ford keep coming out from Doubt and Core. It looked so good. It looked like he should have had control. But the delay in switching over into trade, 
in conjunction with the lack of hand cannoneers, has put him fully on the back foot now. And just a small wave of spin will hold him back in these choke points. The tower elephants with the double crossbow and drop pe on peppering him down. And a dent in the base. Core cool. in trouble now. Escalating stables on the left side, but stable units isn't the problem. He needs archer rangers. He needs hand cannoneers. Without that, I struggle to see a way in which he can push out of his base again. Unless Doubt runs out of resources, but that just isn't happening right now. Enough wood to keep him going, enough gold. Of course, food is eternal in AoE 4, courtesy of farms being infinite food sources. And a secondary keep now going up. Remember, Doubt was hoarding 3,500 stone. He's ready to unleash that stone upon Core. This is no longer a Bassid territory. The Delhi are going to wave their flag here. Spearman line holding. Core not able to breach past, not able to go after the elephants. Not able to put a dent in the count. I think this game is looking pretty over. Cool. Bombard is definitely not the answer. He needs to get into those hand cannoneers, but never going for them. And if you look at the numbers, there's not really much reasoning behind not going for them. Food income was good. Gold income was good. Hand cannoneers aren't any more pricey, really, than, than like horsemen, right? Yeah, it's like 20 food more, but they're comparative. Hand cannoneers could clutch up your game. They're just not there. Maybe I'm overrating the hand cannoneers, but I feel like it has to be better than what you're pushing right now. Because you're playing Spearman and Horseman into a choke point, you need some sort of range. The siege play isn't bad, but remember the bombards are here for the keeps. Realistically, the game winning play for Core is either hand cannoneers or five or six Maganels. He didn't do either here. And it's why the elephants look borderline busted. Because they've gone uncounted in this game. That's why it just feels like a matter of time now before Doubt gets the win. I mean, you can see the military production lines are shrinking. Core cool, having less and less territory. Doubt just diving deeper and deeper. I mean, that elephant count keeps escalating up to 22 now. Food is a problem right now, but it's a problem on both sides. And you can just see as it stands, there's no standing military. I think we're at GG territory. Like, core. Cool. Curious to get his thought process. I genuinely think like it's Maganels or hand cannoneers as a transition. Now, I did highlight the elephants are more susceptible to melee damage, and this is true. Less susceptible to range damage. But Maganels ignore ranged armor, and hand cannoneers have high damage. I think these units are critical to overwhelming this. Because although the elephants are countered by your melee choice, at the end of the day, you're playing 50-50 ranged melee versus 100% melee. The melee is going to lose. It's too one-dimensional. You have no AoE damage and no way of quickly sweeping through. That's why Doubt takes the victory here. Undeniably so. I mean, just look at the damage coming out from all these elephants. 21 elephants just headbutt in the House of Wisdom. Even with almost 30,000 HP, it is simply not good enough. And cool. I think you'll look back at this game. He'll think about the donkeys and think about how lame the all-in melee looked and wonder how different the game could have been if the traders got online quicker and the premium range units came out sooner. If spots and maybes can make up our thought process, but all I know for sure right now is this is a doubt dub and a damn good one. Delhi doubt looking supreme here. Almost an hour in, Imperial Age deep showing that Imp Delhi isn't an Insta-GG against you. Instead, it can be a GG for you.